Economic Development Committee to order. I appreciate your presence today, May 13th. With us uh, are Councilwoman Nuri Martinez and Councilman Jose Huizar. And we are pleased that you are here joining us. We have uh, one item on the agenda today. Uh, Mr. Clerk, why don't you read that for us? Item number one is motion Huizar Price Buscano and Chief Legislative Analyst Report relative to recommendations on possible regulation of food street vending and merchandise and non-food street vending in the City of Los Angeles. <coughs> this item is also referred to the Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee. Okay, thank you. I'm excited that you all are here today for this important discussion on an issue that many of us feel is long overdue. Councilman Wiesar and I introduced this motion to create a street vending policy in Los Angeles last fall because we know that keeping the status quo on this issue is just not acceptable. Uh, across the country, LA is known uh, by many as the birthplace of street vending. Uh, from, the food truck, from the food truck trend we helped launch uh, to our infamous bacon wrapped hot dogs, street vending has been a part of LA's culture for decades, and yet we failed to create a system that works for customers, vendors, uh, and brick and mortar business owners. The goal here is to find a way to bring LA into the 21st century on this issue. Uh, and like other major urban areas like New York, Portland, Chicago have done, they all have adopted uh, street vending policies. So this motion we think is an important first step uh, in helping street vendors come out of the shadows and operate legally in our city. Uh, and today's discussion will help us to continue moving forward uh, on this topic. We, we certainly believe that uh, vendors play an important role in the uh, economic uh, development uh, continuum, community economic development continuum of our cities, our communities, and we want to do all we can to enhance them. So uh, before we hear from the, um, the uh, Chief Legislative Analyst's Office uh, members, uh, any comments? Sure. Mr. Wiesar. Thank you. And first, I want to thank all the <coughs> advocates who have brought us this far in the process. Uh, many of you have um, been involved in various occasions to uh, urge the city to do more when it comes to street vending. Uh, we are as a city behind the ball in terms of other large cities in the country like Chicago, New York, who do have street vending ordinances. Uh, and uh, everyone does know that um, whether you like street vending or don't like street vending, we have to do something. And um, I think this gets us on that path. And we certainly wouldn't be here without people urging us to do more. And as Mr. Price mentioned, um, Los Angeles does have a world-class street food culture, uh, but we sometimes want to pretend it doesn't exist. Jonathan Gold, the Pulitzer Prize-winning food critic, knows that you can get great food in Boyle Heights, for example, and many people go search it out. But with that environment, you have street vendors who are working in the shadows, uh, running away, uh, while even if they do get caught, you're quickly placed again by someone else who's willing to take that risk. That is not the type of environment that we want to create here in the city of Los Angeles. We know that there's a better way of doing this, so hopefully with this discussion and any future discussion, we could get on a path that could make sense for everyone and everyone interested in this. Um, I do have a number of questions, Mr. Price, but I'll wait after the uh, presentation by our staff. Okay, great. We're going to have that uh, presentation again. We appreciate the, uh, the work that's gone in so far. We appreciate the advocacy of uh, individuals and organizations who have been, um, uh, I think, effective act advocates for, for their positions, whether it's food vending uh, or non-food vending. Uh, everyone has a place at the table. I'm going to ask, because of the... Uh, the size. I don't know if we got an, if we have an overflow, but we're going to ask you to limit your remarks to one minute. We'll take those remarks uh, after we've heard uh, the report from the CLA and comments from the council. Mr. CLA. Good afternoon. My name is Felipe Chavez. I'm with the CLA's office. And before you today is a motion we said prize Buscaino and a CLA report relative to street vending. The motion requested our office to report back on several items, which include 
the history of the Special Sidewalk Vending District Program, a review of policies in other jurisdictions, the number of citations that have been issued in the city, current regulations on street vending, and how such regulations are enforced. To respond to the motion, our office held several preliminary meetings, both internally and with community stakeholders on both sides of the issue. We met with business improvement districts, street vendor advocates, and street vendors. I'll start with a summary of the history of street vending in the city. In the 1980s, the city established a street vending task force and a city council ad hoc committee on street vending to study and consider the legalization of food and non-food street vending in the city. In 1994, the city adopted the sidewalk vending ordinance, which allowed for the creation of up to eight special sidewalk vending districts during a two-year pilot program. The sunset clause was removed after the first two years, thereby extending the possibility of creating sidewalk vending districts indefinitely. In 1995, the Asociación de Vendedores Ambulantes submitted a petition to establish a vending district at MacArthur Park. This was approved by the City Council and it allowed for a total of 50 vendors. In 1996, the City issued a sole source contract to Cathedral Housing Economic Development Corporation in the amount of $235,000 for a one-year period to manage and administer the MacArthur Park Vending District. <clears throat> in 1999, the community <coughs> excuse me. Development Department paid a local company $140,000 to manufacture vending carts that complied with county health requirements for use at MacArthur Park. According to a 1992 CAO report, approximately $1.1 million would be required to fund the operation of both a citywide and a special district vending program for a six-month period. Operation of a district-only program would require approximately 500,000 and funding for a six month period. Today, the MacArthur Park Straight Vending District has been the only vending district formed and it is no longer in existence. As requested by the motion, our office reviewed street vending programs in New York, Portland, Chicago, and Philadelphia. All these jurisdictions permit street vending, whether on, this, on the district based basis or citywide, with exemptions. These cities also have staff dedicated to issue such permits and all implement an interagency approach that includes departments such as public works, transportation, law enforcement, and health departments to enforce their respective programs. In the city of LA, street vending is governed under municipal code section 42B, which prohibits street vending, and section 42M, which allows for the formation of street vending districts. The LAPD and Bureau of Street Services are the city agencies responsible for enforcing this law. The LAPD reports that nearly 800 arrests were made in 2012 and over 1,200 in 2013. The Bureau of Street Services reports that 271 citations were issued in fiscal year 2012-2013 and nearly 300 uh, this fiscal year as of March um, of 2014. Based on preliminary findings, including provisions that currently allow the formation of sidewalk uh, vending districts in commercially zoned areas of the city and the fact that other jurisdictions are currently implementing regulated street vending programs and that have experienced positive economic impacts, our office recommends that the council adopt in concept a citywide street vending policy and instruct staff to review sections 42B and M of the municipal code and provide recommendations to facilitate and improve the formation and implementation of special side sidewalk vending districts citywide. We also recommend that a robust enforcement strategy be developed to ensure that all street vendors are in compliance with local, state, and county laws. Lastly, we recommend that staff be instructed to report on impacts of establishing a street vending program, including personnel, guidelines and procedures, operational budget, vendor fee structure, revenue projections, implementation schedule, evaluation procedure, and best practices. Um, additionally, we'd like to, um, to add uh, an additional recommendation to request uh, staff to continue to solicit input from community stakeholders. Uh, the county, uh, county representatives, LAPD, and street services staff is also here to respond to questions. Thank you. Uh, you, you referenced the uh, special sidewalk vending district that was established 
uh, and this continued in the MacArthur Park. Uh, why did it? Uh, why did it fail? In, there your, are in various, your opinion, um, different sources cite different reasons for 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 its failure. One of the reasons uh, cited is because enforce, police enforcement um, there was poor enforcement outside of the vending district. Also, uh, for for vendors who were restricted to the district, uh, found it more attractive to to vend or sell outside the district because there was uh, less no regulations. regulations. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the report in the, the CEO reported in uh, 1992 estimated that a citywide program would cost about 1.1 million for six months. Today, it's about 1.8. Uh, do you know how this figure was arrived at? Um, I believe part of it was a uh, uh, <clears throat> drive in terms of how much it would cost to fund uh, a unit at the community development department. Um, but actually additional research would have to be done to determine how much it would cost at this, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, on table one of your, your report, page four, uh, citations uh, by Bureau of Street Services uh, certainly is telling uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, where it appears a lot of the enforcement activity took place. Talk about the uh, the NTA. Um, the notice to appear? Yeah, notice to appear. What exactly is that? Where is it? I'm going to defer where, that where question to the, the police department. Okay. Can we have the police department up, police, or someone from the enforcement side? Good afternoon. From LAPD. Um, welcome, welcome to you both. If you could just kind of walk us through the NTA, the NOV, and of course the arrest uh, is pretty we, evident. We can only speak to the LAPD portion of the arrest, which okay. is the 800 in 2012 and uh, approximately 1,200 in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. And those don't include uh, what I uh, advised Philippe. There's a number of tools that our senior lead officers and our officers use also. It doesn't include all the number of uh, warnings that are issued, and there's others. Uh, enforcement uh, sections that they can use, like blocking the sidewalk, mm -hmm. littering that they use to, to try to uh, curtail some of the vending in these areas. Those aren't included in the staff. Do you, do you issue, though, the notice to appear? Is that a citation that you do? Yes, notice to appear is the citation. Okay. They're, right, they're then, not so a person gets that, and then what does that mean? Where do they appear? When do they appear? They, they what must the consequences appear, of appearing or not appearing? It's a misdemeanor crime, so they'll divi uh, appear in Division 86, which is over here by uh, Twin Towers. That They'll get a citation date. Uh, and then if they don't appear, then uh, a warrant will be placed into the system, somewhere around $200 warrant uh, until they do appear. That, we don't physically arrest and take them into jail. We normally, if they have good identification, issue that release from custody or notice to appear citation. You don't confiscate the, the equipment? Now, uh, the we goods? do work in conjunction with Bureau Street Services and, and sometimes with uh, Department of Sanitation. Then we will confiscate equipment. They will. Uh, generally on ours, no, we will, uh, if it's food items, we will have to throw that away because there's nowhere to really store it. Uh, if we physically take the person into custody, then we will have to store and book all of the physical property that they maintain. Okay. Members, any other Yeah, How questions? is it, um, in the past, I know that when it comes to enforcement, we've been told that, and I don't know if this is accurate, so correct sure. me if I'm wrong, that LAPD would be interested in doing more enforcement, but unfortunately it's a cat and mouse game because even if you do go out there and cite people, the county is unwilling or does not provide enough resources to dispose of the food properly or handle those health issues which we as a city are not equipped to do that. Is that accurate? And I have more of the experts, which is the senior lead officers that do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. That is, there is some accuracy to, to some of that. I don't want, think cat and mouse would be the term, but I think limited resources um, play a, a huge part in, in when we do go out uh, and enforce uh, for the LAPD side, according to the senior lead officers, it's complaint-based. Uh, so mm -hmm. when we get uh, a, a number of complaints from businesses or a residential area that says these vendors are taking over the trash is littering up is then we have to do some type of enforcement strategy. But yeah. I think we could bring up the senior lead officers who have the more day-to-day -day enforcement aspect of that, uh, and they could talk to what difficulties they have. Uh, if you'd like to join us, uh, you're, you're welcome to come up, please. 
senior lead officers play an important role. In Absolutely. Good afternoon. Uh, my afternoon. Name is, uh, senior lead officer Gutierrez. I work out of uh, Rampart Division. And basically what he was saying is correct. It's uh, uh, the county health department uh, will usually try to come out into our area uh, sometimes once or twice <clears throat> a month. Um, but like everything else, it's based on resources and uh, um, uh, money. And so um, when we go out with the health department, they take care of all the uh, perishable items and the uh, makeshift uh, barbecues and, and whatnot, and, and they confiscate them. We do not. And that is because we don't have the expertise or is it the expertise or the authority to actually handle that part? Well, it, 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 unless we're arresting them, um, we have nowhere to store the equipment. Uh, so if, if a vendor is arrested uh, and he has non-perishable items, whatever he has will be booked into property uh, so the arrestee can retrieve the property once he's released. But other than that, we, we have no authority to, to take or, or keep property. Okay, great. Thank you. This is, I mean, for me, this is helpful just to understand what's the current lay of the land, right, when enforcement is proposed and some of the difficulties that we encounter when enforcement is attempted uh, in terms of our uh, co uh, cooperation and uh, work with the county. And, and I found that it would spend the county many times who say they don't have resources uh, to do their work when it comes to enforcement. And That's absolutely I'm not saying that I agree correct. with it or disagree with it. I'm just saying this is the current lay of the land. I'm just kind of trying to describe and put out there how we work with this issue right now, right? Because okay. the only tool that our senior lead officers have is the actual 4200 section of the LAMC code. When you bring in the county and county health, they bring, it opens up then the health codes and all the other violations that, mm -hmm. that make enforcement a little bit um, easier or have more teeth or more tools to use uh, per yeah. se. That's why when we do it with only 4,200, we're limited. It's 4,200, what, the obstructing the sidewalk? With, with it's the uh, vend illegal vending. It's the vending ordinance it's from the city. The blanket, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's a 4,200 section of LAMC. That's the only tool that LAPD has to use. To use the health sections and those violations, we would have to bring in county health inspectors with us yeah. on, the, on those uh, task forces. And that's okay. the difficulty. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman, any? Uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> I don't know if there's another way to get these reports in on, in a more timely manner. I've been waiting for this report since last week, and so we got it this morning. So it's very difficult to prepare for a hearing when you don't have all the information. I don't know who can help us in this area, but we need to do a better job. Uh, you I agree, Councilwoman. I express the same concern. Uh, you mentioned the MacArthur Park District um, and how it's not a, currently a vendor district. So you mentioned two things of why you feel it failed. One of them was the poor enforcement outside of the vending district. And the second thing was that you said that the vendors also sought um, other opportunities outside of the district. So what have we learned from that experience and how would we make things better if we were to do vendor districts throughout the city? I think one of the lessons learned is that you need to have a robust enforcement strategy um, irrespective of, of which uh, street vending model you implement. Uh, additionally, you need to, um, the, the city would have to implement uh, an educational campaign to um, basically train street vendors to follow state, county, and city laws. And on the enforcement issue, based on what I read in the report, for example, in my council district, there was no citations issued last year. Uh, and there was one in Council District 7, which is right next door to me. So do, do we not have a vending problem in the Valley? Yeah, and those numbers are only those that, are, that citations are issued. Um, for instance, at 77th, where I was recently a captain uh, several years ago, uh -huh. uh, we changed our enforcement strategy to warning first. So you go and warn the person on that corner, and if they up and move, there's no citation. So that could happen a number of times and might be reflective of those numbers. It's not saying there isn't a vending problem, but if the vendors are cooperative and move off that site, it takes care of the problem in and of itself without having to, mm -hmm. to issue a citation. That could be part of that. Again, it's also based on it's complaint driven, a lot of our enforcement. And if the business community or the residential community is not really up in arms and calling the police department to take some type of action, you might see a decrease in the number of citations that are issued. 
I think to go back uh, to the question you asked Philippe about MacArthur Park, and I think some of the lessons when we talked in this committee, a number of reasons why those vendors did not want to stay at MacArthur Park was the, the inconsistent enforcement um, that we put to bear on the people outside of, of that vending section. I think any new sh vending ordinance that, that you consider should be big enough to incorporate a larger community as opposed to if we cap it at 50, then after we hit 50, there's going to be tons of illegal vendors still vying for, to sell their product. I think we have to, that's why it's very difficult to try to come up with a, a, a robust uh, regulation that's going to encompass a lot of those different issues. And I think vending, we talk a lot about food, but it also includes merchandise. Uh, and then what do we do on Valentine's Day? What do you do on Mother's Day when, when the majority of the city of Los Angeles is out there um, trying to make a, a living on those days? Right. And there's two things that I, I don't know if this, the report speaks to. The cooking and the food preparation, which is probably one of the biggest concerns in my district in terms of how we, is that getting lost in, in this conversation or how are we going to deal with that aspect of, of um, any established vending district if that's the the direction that we move in? Well, we in, uh, included in our report recommendations to have um, city staff work with the county health department to address those issues. So it would be up to the health department to address the... And then the other thing that I often hear about is, um, you know, de depending on what part of the city you're in, if they're, if they're known gang areas, sometimes people get taxed on the street. That's a huge issue. Um, where, you know, a known gang member or a, go a known gang, for that matter, can walk up to a, a vendor and simply tax them once a month or once a week. Has that been addressed in the report? That issue specific has not been addressed in the report, but we do you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm referring to? No, absolutely. And we talked about it in committee. And, and does that happen? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have problems in Hollywood with that. We have problems in South uh, Los Angeles with that going on. I think... That is uh, why we would be in favor of trying to do some type of regulatory rule because the vendors feel that they can't come to the police to report that right. because they believe they're, gonna, they're doing something illegal on their own uh, account. So that gets underreported, the number of extortion uh, that these people are paying to some of these gang areas to, to vend in their area. So I, I think that's a number that we can't really put our finger on yet. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a problem? Absolutely. Do I believe it's going on? Yes, it is. And the third one is the issue of counterfeit merchandise. <clears throat> That also is a huge issue. And that's where I, um, I prefaced earlier, we, vending encompasses food, and then we also have the merchandise aspect of it. And the merchandise aspect has its own set of rules and regulations that are going to be different than the food. So whenever we draft some type of ordinance, it's going to have to be very specific as to the, the, the types of things that are being sold. Future, future reports would be more specific to the non-food or the general merchandise aspect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, we've got lots of, uh, of uh, comment cards. Uh, because of the number, we're going to ask you to limit your comments to one minute. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. I think uh, uh, if, you can, if you can clear the, clear the table, we'll, we'll take some public testimony. And I know several of you are, are with the same organization. If uh, someone from your organization expresses your, your, your thoughts or your feelings, you can feel free to, to pass, or even if you come up to the table, you can say pass uh, uh, to help speed things along. But let's ask uh, uh, Jorge uh, Perez, Martha Garcia, and uh, Dolores Castro to please come up. You can. Good afternoon, committee members. Thank you uh, for uh, putting under consideration. You want to identify yourself, sir? Will you identify yourself, please? Yes, Jorge Perez from the Cultural Market. So um, I really appreciate all of you um, putting in consideration this uh, street vending issue. But uh, I'm going to ask you, please don't see just the street vending. I, I would like to you see, all of you see, the big picture. The street vending is part of the local economy, not just the street vendor. It has some different components. It's so complex. I think everybody's going to be agree on that. It's very complex, right? But um, at this point, city, um, well, two blocks away from this White House, you can find, um, you can buy a, a hot dog, you can buy a T-shirt. Vendors are selling legally in Washington, D.C., two blocks away from this White House. 
in so why the city of Los Angeles, we say the most, most multicultural city in the U.S., we don't have a street vending. So um, I think you had in, the, in a good position to make um, these people sell legally, to make this easier life for these people, bring food to the tables, okay? In, at the start in 1990, says there is a 10,000 vendors around Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. Now we have more than 20, I guess. So in it's, it's known in East LA, in okay. San Pedro, uh, it's in San Fernando Valley. Even we don't have a citation, as the uh, councilwoman says, but uh, that's just part okay. of the life. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Martha Garcia, followed by Dolores Castro. If you can please be ready. And Belino Perez. You may begin. Thank you. Yeah. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Dolores Castro. Soy vendedora de accesorios de celulares. Me he dedicado al comercio por casi 18 años. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Dolores Castro. I am a vendor. I sell access se cell phone accessories. Me he dedicado al comercio por casi 18 años. I've been doing this type of business for almost the last 18 years. Y este ha sido mi manera de sostener a mi familia. And this has been my primary way of supporting my family. Mm -hmm. En este momento nos ha afectado la ordenanza de la ciudad. Hey, at the present time, the city ordinance has, has really affected us. Porque la policía nos ha, no nos ha dejado trabajar en muchos casos, arrestan. Because the, the police department has not allowed us to do our work, and oftentimes they arrest us. Confiscan nuestra mercancía. They confiscate our merchandise. Y estamos expuestos a costosas multas. And we also are exposed to very high fines. Nosotros los vendedores creemos que tenemos derecho que se nos trate con respeto y dignidad. As vendors, uh, we feel that we deserve respect and to be treated with dignity. Ya que no estamos cometiendo ningún crimen. Since we're not committing a crime. Solo estamos tratando de sostener a nuestras familias. We're only trying to support our families. Por eso tenemos la necesidad que se legalice la venta en las calles. That's why we have the need and we request to legal, a view to legalize street vending para que podamos seguir trabajando de una manera ordenada y justa y digna so that we can continue working in an organized, fair and just or dignified way. Y esta ciudad estaría impulsando su economía al abrir nuevas oportunidades de empleo. And this city at the same time will be improving the economy because it will be opening new op business opportunities. Nosotros, todos los vendedores, estamos aportando nuestro granito de arena a la economía. All of us, the street vendors, we are also contributing, even in a small way, to the local economy. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. We appreciate it very much. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Marta García. Good afternoon. My name is Marta García. Soy vendedora ambulante. De, de Boyle Heights, Los Ángeles, del I'm, este de Los Ángeles. I'm a street vendor in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. Y estoy en la lucha para legalizar la venta ambulante para poder uh, trabajar honradamente, And I'm here joining this fight so that street vendors could be, receive a legal, uh, legalization to do our job and we can continue working dignified in a positive way, beneficial to the city. Para no, se, no seguir viviendo los, el hostigamiento de la policía. So that we, y, we don't continue being harassed by the police department. Y poder trabajar para poder mantener nuestras familias. And so that we can continue working in order to be able to support our families. Muchas gracias por su atención. Gracias. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your testimony. <clears throat> Mi nombre es Avelino Pérez. My name is Avelino Pérez. Eh, yo les doy las gracias a los compañeros por asistir acá. I thank all my colleague friends for being here today. Y lo que pedimos es de que legalicen 
los, los vendedores ambulantes. What we ask of you is to please legalize the ordinance so that for street vending purposes. Habemos muchos compañeros que venden frutas. There's a lot of us who y, sell fruit. Y diferentes productos. And different other products. La razón que vendemos en las calles, muchos de nosotros tenemos un trabajito dos, tres días. The reason why we sell on the streets, many of us, is because they give us work maybe for two or three days. Y muchos de nosotros lo tomamos los fines de semana, sábado y domingo para poder sostener la familia. And many of us do that, like Saturdays and Sundays, so that we are able to support our families. Hay muchas personas de mayores de edad que ya no les dan trabajo. There's a lot of seniors or elderly people who cannot get work. Entonces es el trabajo de diario para ellos. So that's their daily job for them. Y muchos de los compañeras o compañeros pues venden diferentes productos que no contiene grasa. And a lot of my uh, colleague friends sell different products which don't necessarily contain fat like food. Nosotros pedimos a nuestras autoridades que nos legalicen. So we ask our authorities, powers of be, to please legalize so we can do our work. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Gotcha. Please, uh, let, let's restrain the, uh, the clapping until the very end. How's that? Uh, Caridad uh, Valesquez, Augustine Moreno, Maria Garcia, Laura M Million. Please come. Uh, bueno, Caridad. Mi nombre es Caridad Vázquez. My name is Caridad Vázquez. Tengo 50, 54 años y vivo en, vivo en Boyle Heights. I'm 54 years old and I live in Boyle Heights. Y vengo de la organización ILA. And I'm here no. with an organization called ILA. Antes que nada, dale gracias a nuestro concejal, José Huiza. Be before we proceed, I would like to thank our council member, Mr. Huizar, Price, que nos están and also Mr. Price for, a legalizar, a legalizar venta. for supporting us and helping us legalize our also the rest of the council members, I'm sorry I do not know your names, but I would like to thank you on behalf of all my other friends. El propósito de que estoy aquí es que nos ayuden a legalizar nuestra venta ambulante. The reason why I'm here is we are asking for your help to help us legalize street vending. Como he oído mis compañeros, todos tenemos necesidad a que se legalice nuestra venta. As my previous friends spoke, we all have the need and the necessity to have you help us legalize our Para ya no seguir, seguir así hostigado con la, con la ciudad y la policía que están haciendo su trabajo porque trabajamos ilegalmente. So that we will stop the harassment from the city personnel and from the police department who do, are doing their work because we are doing something that's currently illegal. Y si estoy aquí, eh, quiero... Quiero a nombre de mis compañeros que nos ayuden, que nos apoyen a legalizar nuestra venta. And I'm here because on behalf of my colleagues and myself, I want to ask you to please help us, to help us and support us so that we can legalize the vending. Para ya no sufrir de, de, la, de la sociedad que nos está hostigando que no trabajemos en la calle. So that we will, will stop the suffering also that's directed at us from society that's harassing us, telling us to stop vending on the streets. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Augustine? Mi nombre es María García. My name is María García. Y estoy aquí, soy miembro de SAGE, una agencia no lucrativa. I am a member of SAGE, a non-profit organization. Y pues estoy aquí para apoyar la, la, la legalización de los vendedores ambulantes porque ellos trabajan honradamente, no hay I am, trabajos. I am here in support of legalizing street vending because they're working hard since there's not a lot of work or jobs out there and they work honestly están cooperando para um, una economía pues porque a, a todo esto tampoco no hay trabajos para las personas they are in turn contributing to the local economy because honestly there's not very many jobs for people 
y como ya se mencionó, muchas personas son ancianas y otros tienen pues su familia y quieren, quieren mantener solamente su familia. And as it was mentioned uh, previously, a lot of them are seniors or elderly and a lot of them have families and they do this to support their family. Ojalá que, que, que lo hagan bien para que también ellos cooperen con la limpieza que sí a veces queda. And I hope uh, it's done correctly so that they in turn can cooperate with the cleanup that is it's true, is oftentimes left behind. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Agustín Moreno. Good afternoon. My name is Agustin Moreno. Estoy apoyando aquí a los ambulantes. I am here in support of street vendors. I am volunteer Estamos at the organization SAGE and also at other organizations. So, uh, esteemed council members, I would hope that you approve this ordinance and it will benefit the city and the economy in Los Angeles. Así como los vendedores deben de respetar a las autoridades como la, para respetar y que lo respeten a, también a ellos. In, in the same way, the way the community should respect the authority, also people in authority should respect them as well. Así que ustedes esperemos que den el sí porque sí se puede. And I, we hope that you say yes because we can do it. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got uh, Laura Millian. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Laura Millian. Vengo representando. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Villan. A toda la comunidad ambulante, I'm vendedores here, ambulantes. I'm here representing all the street vending community. Y a la comunidad gay. And also I'm here representing the gay community. Porque nunca se habla de la comunidad gay, nada más de la gente heterosexual. Because uh, Todos tenemos necesidad. Right. Because it's never spoken about the gay community, only about the heterosexual community, but in reality we all have needs. A la comunidad gay se le cierran más las puertas que a la gente heterosexual. Because uh, the doors are closed even more to the gay community compared to the doors are closed, which are less to the heterosexual community. Lo único que pido que nos apoyen, nos abran las puertas para tener trabajo. The only thing I ask is to please support us. Please help open the doors for us so that we can have jobs. Todos tenemos necesidad y todos pagamos taxes. We all have needs and we all pay our taxes. Por favor, ayúdenos para que tengamos cómo sobrevivir. No es un pecado querer trabajar. Please help us so that we Thank can you. have a way to survive. It's not a sin if you want to work. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> okay, Fanny Ortiz, Martha Garcia, uh, Mark uh, Villanos, and Claire Fox. Come on, don't be bashful. Come on up. Fanny? Hi, my name is Fanny Ortiz. I'm a Bull Heights resident. I am a single mother who is a client of local street vendors. I'm also a friend and a fighter for my rights. Um, I'm also a newly elected Bull Heights Neighborhood Council. And I'm here to support the street vendors. The lack of job opportunities in my community is the window of opportunity for local street vendors to become entrepreneurs. However, the need to, of creating a job has become a reason for local street vendors to become criminalized. Allowing to legalize street vending would decriminalize the street vendors and would also allow for the entrepreneurs to earn an honest wage to support their families. Legalizing street vending would give everyone the right to work without fear. It would allow for them to support their families. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mark Valinados. I'm a resident of CD1 and work in CD14 at Occidental College. I'm also speaking on behalf of LA Walks, a pedestrian group. And I want to say a little bit about, a little more about the history of, of regulation of vending in LA. So once upon a time, it was uh, like any other business, you could get a permit to vend in the city. This is an old ordinance. You could pay $5 to, to vend on foot, $10 on a wagon, and $4 to get a stand in the, in the streets. Eventually, those, it was restricted in the business districts. 
1974, the City Council passed a ban on, on vending citywide, but Mayor Tom Bradley vetoed it. And I want to read you his statement, which is still relevant today. I believe we need to encourage, not discourage, the creation of new small business enterprises without which upward mobility on the socioeconomic ladder would become more difficult. And um, it was a good move when the city tried to legalize these special vending districts in the 90s, but as we heard, it was too complex, too hard to do, didn't really work. So I think the solution moving forward is a citywide legalization of vending with common sense regulations on location, hours, et cetera, and that'll give us benefits for jobs, for walkable streets, and also for healthy food. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Martha. Martha? Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Marta García. Good afternoon, my name is Marta García. Eh, tengo, vengo de Los Ángeles, de Ohio Heights, del este de Los Ángeles, soy vendedora ambulante. I'm a uh, street uh, vendor, I come from Los Angeles, Ohio Heights in East LA. Estoy aquí para, en la lucha para legalizar la venta ambulante. I am here joining the fight so that street vending can be legalized. Ya que mi necesidad es, es muy grande porque no, no hay trabajo, no he encontrado trabajo y my, solamente de esa manera puedo sostener a, la, a mi familia. My need is very strong because I haven't been able to find a job, I don't have a job, and I need means to be able to support my family. Por, de, de esta manera está, es, estamos aquí luchando para que nos escuchen. That's the reason why we're here, we're joining in this battle so that you can listen to our plea. Agradecemos que, que nos den esta atención, nos den la oportunidad de, de expresar nuestro, nuestro sentimiento, we, nuestras necesidades. We appreciate your attention and for the opportunity to, you're allowing us to express our feelings and our thoughts and our needs. Y muchas gracias por escuchar nuestras necesidades y por, gracias por la atención. Thank you for listening to our needs and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Claire Fox. I'm the Director of Policy and Innovation for the LA Food Policy Council. The LA Food Policy Council endorses the legalization of sidewalk food vending because it's an important part of how food happens in our communities. It's a vital part of our cultural food landscape and as Angelino, something that we're very, very proud of. So we want to see the food entrepreneurs like the vendors here today thrive as a part of a local food economy with a citywide permit system. Um, we also think this is a great opportunity for expanding access to healthy food. As you know, many communities lack sufficient access to nutritious food, but many of the vendors here today sell fresh fruits, vegetables, healthy prepared foods. So we really have an opportunity and we encourage the city to continue to work with our coalition and the County Department of Public Health to define healthy food carts in an inclusive way, a way that's simple to enforce and achieves our community health goals. And we'd really like to see some substantial incentives and support for healthy food carts. Thank you so much for your leadership on this very important issue. Thank you. Okay, Maria Cal Calbido, uh, Elitz McInnes, Mike Dennis, Berta Arce, and uh, Gloria Gutierrez. Hello, uh, Maria, go ahead. Maria Cabildo, and I'm here to speak in support of the uh, vending program. I think it's really important that we focus on the citywide program because we saw the failures of the district program in MacArthur Park, and I've done a lot of research on it, and I'd be happy to share with you. It. So it's very important that it's citywide. You know, again, just the city of LA is the only major city in the United States that doesn't have a legal program. It's really critical. The legalization of sidewalk vending offers people that face multiple barriers to employment, who otherwise have few employment options, an opportunity to become economically integrated to the region's economy. It is increasingly difficult for low-skilled workers and other Los, Angeles, Los Angelinos with barriers to employment to earn their livelihood and provide for themselves and their families. Los Angeles is kept from fulfilling its truest potential Potential as a great metropolitan center when the most vulnerable of its population is ill-housed, unable to provide healthy food for their families, and unable to pursue their entrepreneurial spirit. Street vending is the face of a bottom-up economic recovery during these post-recession years. 
And sorry, just one last note. Um, it's also a lot of these vendors who are arrested get into the system, sometimes get into deportation proceedings, and it leads to the separation of families, children that are born in the U.S., separated from their parents who are not legal residents, and that is something that has to stop. And by legalizing vending, we'll be able to put a stop to this horrible practice. Thank you. Belis? Good afternoon. I'm Felice McInnes, and I represent the Lamert Park vendors. I am one of many, yet one of few. Before you is an African-American woman who is a U.S. citizen, label-ready senior adult, but is discriminated against, not because of the color of my skin, nor the shape of my features. I am discriminated against because of my age. I haven't given up on stable employment. I have come to realize, though, the older I become, the less opportunity is available. Homelessness in L.A. is more than any other city in the U.S., and my people are at the forefront of that. Joining the ranks of homeless African Americans is not an option for me. I refuse to sleep on the streets or be taken advantage of because there's no, faith, no safe place for me to be. I'm willing to earn my way, and street vending has allowed me to stay afloat. I can manage to keep myself one month away from sleeping on the couch somewhere. I sell hot dogs like many other people in this room. We are united in selling food on the streets of Los Angeles. We are not criminals, but we are treated as such by the police when someone from the community calls. <coughs> Singapore has the street vending areas set up where there's all the facilities that we need in order to operate safely and within the law of food vending. I hope you all consider this. It's very, very important because I'm tired of being homeless, I'm tired of being broke, and I need an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Mike? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Gloria Gutierrez. I'm a resident of Ball Heights for 22 years, and I also work for East LA Community Corporation. Um, at East LA Community Corporation, I've uh, walked the streets of South LA, of the Valley, of Ball Heights, and of East LA, talking to many vendors on the street, and they've shared very emotional stories with me. Oh my God, that was crazy. They've shared very emotional stories with me um, about the police harassing them, and when they take away their products, they take away the rent for their kids. And I get really emotional because I know that one day my parents may have to rent because they won't be able to get a job. So I just really want to urge you to take this into consideration. And sorry. It's okay, take your time. And please support street vending in Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es. Can we get some help? Thank you. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Berta Arce. Berta Arce. Good afternoon. My name is Berta Arce. Uh, también soy vendedora. I'm also, volante. I'm also street vendor. Vendo paletas, o sea. Ice cream. I sell ice cream. Y he venido aquí a apoyar a mis compañeros. And I'm here in support. Porque supporting my necesitamos ¿no? la legalización de la venta ambulante. Because we need para, street vending to be legalized. Para estar ¿no? eh, bien tanto eh, la parte ¿no? legal para que ya no eh, no nos moleste la policía. So that we can be los, in a good place, legalized, so that the police officers que, stop harassing us or bothering us. Yo sé que ellos cumplen con su trabajo, pero no por eso necesitamos regularizar la venta para estar ambas partes bien. We know that what we're doing needs to be uh, regulated and um, we need the work, so we need to do something legalized, legally so that we all can be on the correct. Muchas gracias side. por darnos la oportunidad de escucharnos. Thank you for, the for listening to us and the opportunity you give Thank us. Thank you. Okay, uh, please come forward. Mike Dennis. Berta Arce, Gloria Gutierrez, and Luis Gutierrez. Are you here? I'm yielding my time. Okay. Victor Lopez. Arguela, uh, is it Suilas? I think, yeah. yeah three worlds. Muy buenas tardes. 
a cada una de las autoridades presentes esta tarde. Muy buenas tardes a señor Gil Cedillo. Un gran placer de saludarlo aquí con, con todas nuestras personas que se encuentran presentes. Mi nombre es Víctor López. My name is Victor López. Good afternoon to all your honorable representatives, persons of authority, Mr. Gil Cedillo. Uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here and seeing you all. Uh, hemos escuchado muchas súplicas de los diferentes vendedores de las diferentes áreas. We have heard a lot of pleas from different vendors uh, throughout many different areas. La organización Ola y los dirigentes de los vendedores de la calle Sexta. Ola organization and also the uh, directors or the people who direct the Sixth Street vendors. Venimos por años trabajando, organizando a los vendedores para que vendan honradamente. We have been working for many years trying to organize all the vendors so that they can uh, work honradamente. Igual, honestamente. Honestly, honestly. honorably. Y nos alegra bastante de que la ciudad implemente esto para los vendedores. And we're very happy if the city implements this ordinance in favor of the street vendors. Porque esto uh, le dará una buena vista a nuestra calle Sexta, because a la ciudad de Los give, Ángeles. This will give a good view to our street. Y traerá más economía, and no solo a los vendedores de la calle. It would also help with the economy, not just economically for the vendors, but also. Sino también a los vendedores ya establecidos. For the street vending and also for the already established Esperemos que la ciudad uh, implemente bien los fondos que van a ser utilizados we hope that the city uses y que no le pongan correctly the que, funds that are going to be used y que no le pongan tropiezos a los vendedores para poder obtener el permiso para vender. And do not create more obstacles to the street vendors in order to be able to get their permits. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Thank, Thank you. you. Doug Smith. Is Doug with us today? Okay, would you like to get him, please? Uh, is it Joel uh, Met Metui? Carlos Cueves? Leticia Andrade? Okay, Sissy. Okay, tell Sissy we'll, we're waiting for her, too. Jose uh, Cuestas. <clears throat> Rosemary Molina, Doug Lugo, Lindsay Vaniman. <coughs> okay, sir, you want to identify yourself? Would you like to identify yourself? Yes. Doug Smith. Doug Smith. Okay, Doug. Floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Doug Smith, and I'm an attorney with Public Counsel, the nation's largest pro bono law firm. Public Council's community development project maintains a specific focus on expanding opportunities for low-income entrepreneurs, and I want to express our strong support for a citywide street vending policy. As you've heard today, vending is a crucial economic lifeline and an important starting point for small business ownership. The mayor has said he wants to make LA more business friendly. A great place to start would be by recognizing and supporting the existing entrepreneurs in our city, like street vendors, who already contribute to our economy and culture in so many important ways. We strongly urge the city to take advantage of this important opportunity to generate business revenue and community-based economic development, to contribute to a safer and more vibrant public spaces, and to increase the availability of healthy food options in underserved communities. Now is the time for Los Angeles to join the other major cities in this country and create a process that recognizes and supports hardworking micro-entrepreneurs. A street vending policy should apply citywide, should include incentives for healthy food vending, and should be characterized by responsible and humane enforcement. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Benito Alvarez. Domenico Lopez. Uh, Leanna Hildado. Ben Antonio Bernabe, you are? I'm Lindsay Vanneman from the library store. Okay. 
the library store on wheels is the mobile incarnation of the library store within the central library and is run by the library foundation of los angeles a nonprofit organization benefiting the los angeles public library and its 74 branches proceeds benefit the community of los angeles creating essential literacy and cultural programs Library Store on Wheels allows us to reach a greater part of Los Angeles community on its outings. We have traveled as far as Northridge and have as far south as Santa Ana, creating partnerships with local businesses, groups, and libraries. We participate in such events as Renegade Craft Fair, Patchwork Craft Fair, and the Festival of Books, as well as events at various branches of the Los Angeles Public Library. We hold a valid seller's permit and business license for the library store, as well as the necessary insurance to operate. We add locations to our seller's permit when we are going to a new location and report the tax collected on our quarterly return that we file with the State Board of Equalization. Uh, this ensures that taxes collected are appropriated to the right district. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Madam? Hi, uh, my name is Rosemary Molina. You guys called my name. I'm here on behalf of the Clean Car Wash campaign. Um, we organize car wash workers in Los Angeles, but a lot of our workers on their off time are also street vendors. Um, and sadly, last year, one of our car wash workers who was selling mangles on his day off was arrested and subsequently placed into deportation proceedings. Um, we are here to urge you guys to legalize street vending to protect all workers. And thank you for your time. Hey, thank you. Mi nombre mío es uh, David Lugo. My name is da da David Lugo. Soy miembro de la organización ILA y Chirla de Los Ángeles. I'm a member of the organizations ILA and Chirla of, of the city of Los Angeles. Uh, como ven ustedes, yo soy una persona ya mayor. As you can tell, senior, I'm elderly, I'm y senior. Alguna vez he ido a tratar de vender porque no me dan trabajo porque me ven viejo. And oftentimes I try to go and, and do street vending because I don't, I'm not able to get work because they already see me that I'm old. Y vengo a apoyar aquí para que den permisos y regularicen la venta ambulante. I am here in support so that they can get permits and also legalize uh, street vending. Es ridículo que la ciudad apoyó las ventas de marihuana en mi comunidad en Echo Park. Tenemos muchos problemas it's que le venden a that, los niños. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous that the city uh, supported the sale of marijuana and in my community uh, uh, Echo Park. In Echo Park, the marijuana uh, is being sold to children. Uh, I want, I, I, we want to pay taxes and we want to permission to the LA street vendors uh, because this is terrible. Uh, we impulse the economy. It's ridiculous in Los Angeles. They support the marijuana place and don't support the vendors. Vendors can pay taxes. Yes, that's terrible. In my community, watch the little guys buy marijuana in the, uh, sh in the marijuana shop. Mm -hmm. The city support the marijuana shit. Marijuana. Yeah. Why not support the vendors? Vendors can pay taxes. The first, the, the first building in Los Angeles, when this was Mexican territory, they, they are vendors. And right now, see the first place was La Placito Olvera. Okay. I want to support the street vendors. Uh, with a permission, a uh, street vendor can pay tax and support the city. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. <clears throat> Let's please hold, hold your applause till the end. Yes, sir. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Domingo López. Good afternoon. Eh, My name is Domingo López. Eh, te soy vendedor de ambulante de ahí de la Sexta Avenida y la aquí a la Señor. cerca de la MacArthur Park. Espérame. I'm a street vendor on Sixth Street near MacArthur Park. Este, estoy aquí para apoyar a, a, los, a la organización de la venta ambulante. Porque... I am here um, in support of the street vending organization and the street vendors. Porque... Yo veo de que nuestra nuestra venta ambulante es la que trae mucha gente de muchos lugares, por ejemplo de Santa Ana, de I, otros I, lugares como de Van Nuys, de muchos lugares more. vienen gente a comprar nuestro producto. I have noticed that street vending attracts people from a lot of places like Van Nuys, like Santa Ana. They come to this area to buy our product and our merchandise. Por eso que veo que sí es muy importante que lo, lo legalizan. That's why I feel that it is very important for you to legalize street vending. 
porque ayuda a los demás este, negocios que están establecidos ya aquí en, en Los Ángeles. Because in turn that helps the already established businesses in Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank Gracias. you for your comments. Gracias, Hi, my name is Liana Hidalgo, and um, I'm a student at UCLA, a student researcher at the Cesar E. Chavez Department of Chicana Chicano Studies. And I'm here because I've been uh, working with the street vendors uh, for a while, and what I've noticed is how much they contribute to the local economy. Um, every week they spend hundreds of dollars um, in small businesses and also large businesses. Businesses like Smart and Final, um, small businesses that sell um, the dough and the masa needed for their products as well as uh, other small businesses um, that sell produce here downtown in LA. So I see that they're investing hundreds of dollars every week um, and so there's a web of economic exchange that's happening here in Los Angeles that the street vendors are a huge part of. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, my yes, name sir. is Antonio Bernabe. I want to speak in Spanish because in the other room we have no translation so we need somebody to... It's okay, you may speak it. Spanish, we've got an yeah, interpreter. I know, that's why. So, uh, soy organizador para Chirla. I'm, tr I'm a ch organizer for Chirla. Eh, hace tres años fui llamado por los vendedores ambulantes. Three years ago I was called upon by the street vendors. En los callejones de Los Ángeles. On the alleys of Los Angeles. Porque la policía los estaba arrestando. Because the police was arresting them. Y entregándolos a migración para and ser deportados. They were turning them in, into ICE for deportation procedures. Y encontramos que eh, las razones por las que eran arrestados. And we found out that the reason why they were being arrested. No era por vender. Was not for selling or vending. Pero porque no, po no podían presentar una identificación de California. Mm -hmm. But it was because they were not able to provide a California identification card. Y esta es una violación de una ordenanza municipal. And this has to do with a municipal ordinance. Que permite here. que en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. That is due to a, a local municipal ordinance that allows the city of Los Angeles. Las personas se pueden identificar con una matrícula <coughs> o un pasaporte de su país. It allows for people to be able to identify themselves using a matrícula consular or, or some other kind of identification from their own countries. So, la, la, la policía está violando ordenanzas locales. Therefore, the police in turn is also violating local ordinances. Con este ánimo de arrestar. With their urge to arrest people. Eh, y no fijarse que eh, son personas trabajadoras. And they don't pay attention to the fact that they are hardworking people. Honestas. They're honest y que son parte de la economía de la ciudad. And that they are part of the city's economy. Esto no ha parado todavía. It still has not stopped. Paró momentáneamente porque fuimos a la división central de la policía con It el only jefe Pérez. stopped very briefly because we went to the central police station. Para levantar muchas quejas con los vendedores. To present a lot of complaints. Pero todavía ID. sucede, personas son arrestadas por no still presentar una identificación de California. Legal identification. Okay. Todo esto muestra que hay una animosidad de parte de la policía de perjudicar a los vendedores. This shows that there's animosity from the police officers towards the uh, street vendors. Por eso es que necesitamos legalizar la venta ambulante en Los Ángeles. That, that's why we need to legalize street vending in the city. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Sí. Yes, sir, please uh, sí. identify yourself. Bueno, señores concejales, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. A todos ustedes, mi nombre es Benito. My name is Benito. Vez. Good afternoon, street. Um, good afternoon, esteemed council members. Señor Cedillo, mucho gusto. Nice to see you, Mr. Cedillo. Vengo de parte de mis compañeros a apoyarlos. Vengo del este de Los Ángeles. I'm here with the rest of my friends in support of them. I'm coming here from East Los Angeles. Del departamento de Cherry. From the de sheriff's department. Uh, this, sí. Um, vengo porque yo quisiera de favor que nos apoyaran, que nos dieran la oportunidad de I'm estar en este país. I am here to ask you to please support us and allow us and give us the opportunity to remain here in this country. Ah, es muy bonito, muy hermoso estar en este país viviendo. It is very nice, it's beautiful to be able to be here, living in this beautiful country. Ya ve cómo está pasando ahorita en México las cosas. 
you have noticed that things are happening currently in Mexico? Y quisiéramos que hubiera mucha mucha unión entre nosotros los latinos. And I would like to see a lot of unity amongst us Hispanic Hispanics. Que nos, que nos apoyáramos todos para que este país crezca más. I would like I would like to, for all of us to support each other so that this country continues growing even more. Ya ve cómo son los chinos, ellos se apoyan, se ayudan, tienen you, mucho you, apoyo entre you, ellos. You have noticed how the Chinese community, they help each other, they provide each other a lot of support amongst them. Nosotros podemos hacer lo mismo también. We as well can also do the same thing. Hay okay. que apoyarnos, hay que, hay que estar contentos, hay que, hay que unirnos. Let's support each other, let's be happy and let's unite. Para seguir adelante. So we can, Estados Unidos es número uno. So we can go, move ahead and, and with success because the United States is number one. Thank you. Thank you Gracias. very much. Gracias por escucharme. Thank Gracias you. a todos. Thank you. Thank you. Se puede. Okay. Hey, Bernardino Gonzalez, John Flores, uh, Ziomara Copinho, uh, Liliano Martinez. Okay. Uh, get, ge uh, get General uh, Dobson. Yeah, General. While you're at it. Okay. Jose Fernandez. Jose Fernandez is over there on the back. Who's here? Oh, who's here? No, who's here? Okay. <laughs> Guillermo. Guillermo Gonzalez. Merced Sanchez. Andres Reyes. Maria. Uh, Maria Mercedes. Mercedes Fabio. Fabiola. 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 Maybe. Fabiola. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Vesquez. Ignacio Torres. Patrick Burns. Okay. Bueno, Can you pull the, pull the microphone up a little closer to you, sir? My name is Bernardino Gonzalez. I'm a street vendor at MacArthur Park in West Lake. I've been a street vendor for seven years. And I'm here also in support of the street vendors. Because we're peaceful people, we're working people, we are fighters. We're not criminals. Para que seamos este despatriados, este discriminados. In order to be discriminated against is to be expatriated. Como está pasando ahorita mismo. The just like it's happening nowadays. Y yo le pido pues que los ayuden a realizar este proyecto. I'm asking you to please help us with this project. Más no sufrir más. In order for us all community to stop suffering. Estar atemorizado. We are fearful. Y para que la gente corriendo. They, they, because we're fearful because we have to keep running constantly. Como, porque no somos, ya. Am I done? Uh, you may finish. We're not criminals, we're y fighters, we contribute to the economy. Y ya para que todo se... We want this to be legalized so everybody can be okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon, council members. Thank you so much. Xiomara Corpeño, I'm the director of organizing with Chirla. I concur with all the testimony in support of street vending today, and I wanted to highlight where we have had um, the most experience in organizing street vending, which is really about community police relationships. Um, yes, we understand that the complaints that a lot of times the enforcement is complaint driven, but the actions on behalf of LAPD officers on the ground are unacceptable. Um, they go after vendors. We've seen raids where five police cars descend on one street vendor in order to stop them from vending. We have uh, officers who threaten vendors with deportation. We know that this is not the majority of LAPD officers, but if you're on the street, you are the face of LAPD, and that is a problem. We feel that by legalizing vending, we will help prevent future problems and then help 
The police focus on serious matters rather than go after working people who are trying to make a living and um, contribute to our economic development. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Good afternoon. My name is General Dogon, and I'm a downtown resident, and I'm also a member of LA Can. And I'm also a licensed vendor. I have a 2014 business license and resale license from the city of Los Angeles. I just don't have a store, so I'm forced to vend on the streets. And almost every time that I go out there and set up, I'm being harassed. Who, what kind of items do you vend, sir? Excuse me? What type of items do you vend? What kind of products what do you What kind I of vend? items do you sell? Huh? Oh, like clothes and stuff like that. Okay. And so almost every time I go out and set up, you know, I'm being sweated and harassed, so I can imagine what other folks are going through. And that's why I'm here today to say it's important to legalize vending for everyone in the city, especially to ensure that there's access, right, for all vendors. Downtown LA criminalizes uh, 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 vending, right? Mm -hmm. Some people have said vending is not appropriate for downtown. And, and that there's enough economic opportunity for everyone. That is not true. We want all people working hard to make ends meet in all neighborhoods, to be able to legally vend with no criminal charges associated with vending. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up. Hello, my name is John Flores. Uh, I am a ministry vendor. I am a construction worker by trade. But I do support the street vendors. Um, they do sell healthy food. <clears throat> I have a teenager that I uh, buy food from the vendors. It's healthy food. Um, sometimes there is no time to prepare food, so it's convenient. Sometimes you're far away from home, and the vendor uh, happens to be there, and, and you know that it's healthy food, so I support them in that way. Also, uh, I have family up north, the Leno, which uh, the uh, migrant workers, and um, the street vendors, well, they're part of the economy because they're buying the product. They go to Target, they go to Kmart, Walmart, wherever, and they uh, use that money that they, that they uh, sell their food or, or product, and, and that way they're part of the economy. So I think we should legalize it, and all your council members should support them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, my name is Andres Gomez Reyes. Uh, vivo en el South Central de Los Angeles. I live in South Central Los Angeles. Estoy aquí para dar mi soporte, ayudar a la vendedores ambulantes. I am here in support and I'm asking uh, to help to, women. Todos los días donde I'm yo here. vivo en mi comunidad, los miro oh, que están en la mañana. I'm here to help. I'm here to support um, the street vending. <clears throat> sí, los miro que en la mañana trabajan desde muy temprano. I know that they get up very early to go to work. Ellos están vendiendo sus productos. Mucha gente desayuna ahí con ellos, tamales, uh, atole, lo que venden. They are selling their product. A lot of people go to the street vendors and that's how they have their breakfast. En el día, tamales, they eat bajo el sol, ellos están vendiendo. Day after en las day. noches, ellos venden. Day after day, be it sunny, be it in the evening, they proceed to, to vend. Para vender porque necesitan tener dinero para mantener a sus familias. Because they need to earn money in order to support their families. Pero algunas veces llega la policía y les quita las ganancias, les quita su mercancía. But sometimes the police officers arrive, they take away their earnings and they throw away their merchandise. Y eso no es justo. Porque son personas honradas. And that is not fair because they are honest people. Okay. Que nomás están trabajando. And all Thank they you. are doing is just working. Gracias, señor. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Gracias por su atención y por permitirnos expresar lo que sentimos. Good afternoon. Thank you for your attention and for allowing us to express our feelings. Mi nombre es Mercedes Sánchez. Soy vendedora My name is ambulante. Merced. My name is Mercedes Sánchez and I am a street vendor. Tengo más o menos 10 años vendiendo en lo que le llaman los callejones, la San Pedro. I have been selling uh, for almost 10 years on the callejones on San Pedro, which are like the, the alleys. Hace aproximadamente un mes llegó gente de Burbank diciéndonos que necesitábamos un permiso Approx para vender. Approximately a month ago, people from Burbank came to the alleys and told us that we needed a permit in order to 
sell our products. A la siguiente semana, yo saqué mi permiso. Then the, ne aquí lo tengo. the ne following week, I went and I got a permit and I have it right. here with me. Pero a la semana tercera, a la tercera semana, ya no nos dejó vender la policía. But then, on the third week, the police did not allow us to continue vending. Mi pregunta es, ¿cómo voy a pagar yo este permiso si no me permiten vender en la calle? My no question, hacemos ningún delito, no somos criminales. My question is, how am I going to be able to pay the fee for this permit if we're not being allowed to street vend? Uh, we're not criminals, we're not doing anything, uh, committing any crimes, yeah. we just want to work hard. Right. Solo Thanks. queremos un permiso para vender y pagar nuestros taxes. All Gracias. we want is a permit so we're able to sell and this way we're able to pay our taxes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. Please come. If you've been called, please come to the table. If you've been called, if you think you've been called. <laughs> or if you want to be called. Come Buenas tardes. <laughs> Mi nombre es Guillermina González. Good afternoon. My name is Guillermina González. Soy residente de la ciudad de Los Ángeles. I'm a resident of the city of Los Angeles. Soy miembro activo de la organización East LA Community Corporation. I'm an active member of the East LA Community Corporation. Y soy vendedora ambulante de artesanía. Yeah. I'm, I'm also a street vendor and I sell arts and crafts. Y es dolorosamente triste que la policía arreste a las personas cuando están trabajando honradamente. And it's painfully sad to see the police officers arresting people who are working hard and honestly working. Cuando la policía puede estar atendiendo otros casos de mayor exigencia que arrestar un vendedor ambulante. Whereas instead, the police officers should be attending to other more serious cases or crimes instead of arresting street vendors. En estos momentos que el país está quebrado económicamente, debería darse la oportunidad a nuestra comunidad, a nuestros vendedores. Especially, de, especially in current times when our country is in such bankrupt or deficit state, then more opportunity should be given to the community and to street vending. Y yo apoyo la venta ambulante, ya sea en comida, en diferentes mercancías. And I support street vending, be it food vending or different type of product or merchandise. Thank you very much. Tengo un regalo para ustedes. I brought you a present. Aquí se lo comparten, oh. necesitamos lealtad y compromiso de ustedes. Parte Here de you trabajo. go, you your, um, can uh, share it or pass it on with you guys and this Thank is you. part of the work that I do. Thank you. Los, los, esos solamente son los colores de USC, no son, no tiene de UCLA. Es la lealtad rojo, el abundancia. and red is muy buenas tardes. Right, order in the court. Come on Me llamo Rosa Calderón. Good afternoon. My name is Rosa Calderón. Soy salvadoreña. I'm from El Salvador. Tengo 85 años. I'm 85 years so young. Me trabajo vendiendo en la calle. And I work vending and selling. Me la policía. The street. Pero yo no los culpo, la policía, porque and, ellos es su trabajo. Es the, muy responsable. Su and the, the police arrest me, but I don't blame them because I'm doing, it, that's, their, that's their responsibility. And... No los culpo porque es su responsabilidad. I don't blame the police ellos. for arresting us because Así that's their responsibility. A mí me arrestan, me llevan presa y me quitan todo. Pero What they do is they arrest me, they take me, they arrest me, they take me in, they book me. Um, and they do that constantly to me, but that's what I need to do to support my family. Yo en este país no tengo familia, me mantengo yo sola. I don't have de vender. I don't have family in this country. I support myself and I support myself through street vending. Tengo mi permiso de migración que lo pago cada año. I have permit eso, from I might have my permit from immigration and I pay it annually. Debo de tener el dinerito para pagar esos compromisos que me he echado encima. And I need to have money so that I'm able to pay all those commitments that I chose to bring on to myself. Entonces tengo que trabajar vendiendo y vendo en la calle, en los, en los ángeles. 
So I need to work uh, through street vending, and I, I do that in the streets of Los Angeles. Ahí compro agua, audífonos, y eso es lo que vendo. I buy water and, and, and headsets, and that's what I sell. Sodas and water. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Gracias. Excuse, can we get the name again? Excuse me. Excuse me, madam. Can we get your name again? Su nombre? Rosa Calderon. Calderon, okay. Buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es María Mercedes Favela. My name is María Mercedes Favela. Uh, me dedico a ser ama de casa. I'm a housewife. Pero vengo a apoyar a los vendedores ambulantes. But I'm here in support of, of the street vendors. Eh, porque okay. más antes lo he sido yo también. Because I used to be a street, I used to be a street vendor in the past. Y he sido testigo de que a personas que se dedican a vender que es para ganarse el dinero del de la vida diaria. And I I witnessed how a lot of people who are street vendors they do that. And they dedicate themselves to that profession because that's how they earn their daily living in support for their families. Y les tiran este, su venta ambulante. Yo lo he visto. I've seen how oftentimes their product or food is it's just discarded, thrown away. Les quitan las, la, las bicicletas donde andan vendiendo. They're often, uh, oftentimes they take the bicycles that they use to vent, to, to sell. Y es por eso que yo vengo aquí a um, hablar por ellos, apoyarlos. That is why I'm here in support of them and also speak on behalf of them. Porque la verdad no se me hace justo de que la gente se tenga que que salir todos los días a vender y que se se lo tiren. Por eso, I honestly don't think it's fair for people that go out every day to do their vending and then is thrown away or discarded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Muchas gracias y pues. Thank you. Apelo a todos ustedes. Thank Muchas you gracias. and I urge you to support us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Ignacio Torres. Good afternoon, my name is Ignacio Torres. Este, más que nada vengo por la cuestión de saber de que día a día, este, el despertar y el salir a vender y el dejar eh, la encomienda a la familia. I'm here because I see every day, getting up in the morning, day after day, going out vending and leaving the family on their own at home. El hecho de salir siempre con el temor de que nos vayan a arrestar y nos vayan a quitar las cosas. It is very difficult to go out day, on a daily basis with the fear that we might be arrested or that our uh, merchandise is going, might be confiscated. Es el diario vivir de cada uno de los comerciantes. That's what each one of the entrepreneurs have to face every day and that's what they feel every day. Por lo cual yo les pido atentamente a cada uno de ustedes como representantes. That's why I respectfully ask of each one of you as represented as our representatives. Que cada que cada esta asociación como como este de, de comercio nos nos apoye. To support us the way other um, a sacar a sacar un permiso. Other, uh, other Commerces, commerce associations have been supporting us as well. A support us so that we're able to get a permit. Para así quitarnos el temor de que el día de mañana que nos lleguen a arrestar, este, ya no, ya no estemos en, en la casa con nuestra familia. Es triste. So that this way we will stop being fearful of being arrested, and if that happens, then we will not be able to be at home with our family, and that it's very sad. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. We, we appreciate it. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Patrick Burns. I'm a researcher at the local nonprofit research group, uh, the Economic Roundtable, based in downtown Los Angeles here. Uh, we wanted to share some information about the overall economic impacts that we estimate that come from street vending here in Los Angeles. So the Bureau of Street Services here in the city of LA estimates that there's about 10,000 street vendors of all kinds uh, based here in the city. 
about 43% of those are estimated to be uh, preparers and vendors of uh, food-related products. So uh, those 4,300 4, street vendors that sell food, uh, their income is about uh, $10,000 each, or about uh, $43 million from overall from the sales that they make bit by bit in these street carts scattered around the different neighborhoods of the city. And so our estimate of the impacts of this overall is not just that 43 million, 42 and a half, there's about uh, 67 million once that initial sale is made, plus the uh, sales of uh, supplies of goods and services that go into those carts and that the uh, street vendors in turn use. So the multiplier effect is about 1.6 or $1.60 for every dollar spent. Uh, by their customers on the second page of the handout that I gave you kind of breaks out where the beneficiaries of that uh, spending is. The majority of the direct impacts in blue go directly to the street vendors themselves, but also there's a good share of uh, dollars, about uh, 10.5 million that goes to suppliers of uh, goods and services that go to those street vendors. Uh, carts and about 14 million that ends up trickling down to the workers in grocery stores, the Smart and Final, the others where these uh, worker street vendors buy their products and those uh, workers at home go out to the movie theater, go out to the restaurant and so forth. So, Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, uh, certainly. Thank you. And have you been able to extrapolate how much revenue the city can obtain from these numbers, these base numbers you have? Well, we do have uh, tax estimates, but we didn't bring them here today because this is just a rough estimate. Uh, we'd like to be able to carry out some more uh, substantive research to get a very uh, reasoned and accurate estimate of that tax estimate. Uh, it's something we'd like to explore very much. Okay, and I think that also has to be differentiated between the tax revenue we would receive and the administrative fees that under Prop 218 we would have to cover, right? We have exactly. to make sure that it's just fees that would cover the administrative costs. So right. the tax is an additional, you want to call it profit to the city, right? right? And um, if you could keep in touch with the CLA who's looking further into this, this that type of information I think would be yeah. greatly appreciated by us. Yeah, thank you for that question. It's something that we'd like to study and share. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. and. Uh, we look forward to getting that additional information. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, uh, I appreciate everyone's uh, uh, patience. We've got uh, a few more who are in support of, and then we have several who are opposed. We want to give everyone a chance to express themselves. Uh, Andres uh, Reyes, uh, Maria uh, ba Babela. Oh, she did? Okay, Maria Vasquez. These have been called. Let's move on to. We have several cards uh, in opposition. We'll take their their concerns as well. <coughs> Marty Sheldon, Patty Berman, John Howland, uh, Liran Gubner, Jessica Law. Blair Beston, uh, Kiran uh, Rishi, and Elizabeth Peterson, please be ready. Name, please, and proceed. You've got one minute. Appreciate your patience. Marty Shelton, Highway Chamber of Commerce. My day job is commercial real estate. And as a chamber representative, uh, the chamber would be against legalizing street vending. In the situation with Hollywood, it's a convergence of a number of issues which are unique to Hollywood as it compares to the rest of the city. You have the Walk of Fame, which is unique to the entire country. I know the report talks about Portland, Chicago, New York. The Walk of Fame attracts approximately 18 million visitors a year to Los Angeles. The issues that we have in Hollywood, most of it's been talked about today, talks about street vending, food service. But in Hollywood, there's an issue with street characters and also with side CD vendors, which if you legalize vending, it gives them the right to do what they do on the street, which is a problem for visitors to Hollywood. To talk about the 
sidewalk uh, food service. Uh, if I can take a few more seconds. In Hollywood, you have rental rates that are probably the highest in the city. I'll give you an example. Restaurant space on the boulevard is renting at $7 a square foot. That space is 3,000 square feet. You look at what they have to pay on a monthly basis to be on the street to allow food service out in front of their venues does detract from the revenues that they can generate. That store generates about $700 a square foot in annual sales. So you look at the numbers that that store generates for revenue to the city in terms of taxes. Another store that has a space of 650 square foot rent. Their store is 4,000 square feet. So there's an example in Hollywood where you have rents that are very high for restaurant tenants to be in that community and to have the allowance of street vending does draw from the revenues that they generate for the services. Thank you. Thank you. Patty? Hello, how are you? I'm Patty Berman. I'm a resident of downtown. I'm also the president of the Downtown Neighborhood Council, but I am not representing the council today because we only got this today and we have not had a chance to bring it to our council. We would like to have a chance to do that. I think that you should be going to every single one of the neighborhood councils. You should be asking whether or not they feel it's appropriate for their area and if so, how they would like to see it. I know that what you mean is not what it came out today, which is that you're just going to legalize everything and let it go which is the kind of opinion that you would get if you just listened to the people speaking today. I know that's not what is in mind, but we have to be very careful. This city already does not have the resources to enforce the issues involved with street vending as it is. If you legalize, you must make sure that the resources are supplied. We must be able to regulate and we must be able to enforce, not just the legalized, but then the, still the ones who are not legal. Thank you. Thank you. John? John Howland. Good afternoon. John Howland with the Downtown Center BID. We asked for no decision to be made today based on the CLA report being made public about five hours ago. Um, the CLA report is cursory at best. It tells what a few cities do, um, not how effective those cities are, what's working, what's not, what was the effect on brick and mortar businesses. Uh, no best practices were discussed. We do support the special sidewalk vending district program, however, street vending, uh, because street vending will not work in downtown. But the SSVD will give other communities the opportunity to allow sidewalk vending if enough residents and businesses approve and they believe it is appropriate for their community. Downtown LA is already inundated with food trucks. They cause accessibility and trash issues. They take businesses, they take business away from brick and mortar restaurants and stores. These are businesses that have to go through a laborious and draconian approval and permitting process. Um, bids are forced to do things such as collect trash, provide security and clean streets. The vendors and, tra and food trucks take advantage of that without paying anything in. So we ask that um, no action be taken today. Thank you. Thank you. Laurent. Laurent Gubler, President and uh, CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, uh, Council Members. Uh, we, too, would urge uh, extreme caution in, in proceeding on this. Uh, there really was very little outreach to the business community and residents and schools on this. We think that uh, testimony needs to be uh, broadly accepted to get a better perspective on this. As has been mentioned, we have severe issues in Hollywood. We've been working for years to, to maintain the Hollywood Walk of Fame and to give tourists a good experience there. Because of First Amendment issues, we've not been able to prohibit uh, CD vendors, characters, or the tour operators. Recently, we were able to make some progress with the tour operators because of the uh, uh, prohibition on sales, so that they can only pass out literature now and not exchange money. And that has helped. If this changes, that would all become back a return to the same problems we've had before. And let me tell you, any day in the summer, you'll have 75 to 80 tour operators selling, harassing tourists, 5 to 10 uh, CD vendors, and 25 to 50 characters out there. Uh, so you add this on top of them, we've got severe problems. We, again, would urge you uh, to proceed with caution not to take action today, but to really consider the ramifications in specific neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica. 
Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Lal. I'm the Executive Director of the South Park Business Improvement District. We're located in the southwest corner of downtown LA. I represent the property owners and businesses in the district. We too would urge this committee to um, delay taking action until further review and outreach can be done to the business community in downtown in particular. Our bid alone has received uh, probably more than 110 phone calls related to food carts in the last two months alone. Um, our stakeholders are extremely. Are these concerned. are calls, complaints, or calls? Yeah, they range of from interest to have to establish these activities. So they range from uh, legal dumping of hot dogs and the vending carts being left in alleyways, to um, someone was just robbed at gunpoint a couple of weeks ago, about uh, two blocks from the Metro Charter School and Hospital, and um, uh, customers becoming sick due to the expired food. We've had that as well. So they really range. It's a broad issue. Um, we are, our businesses are concerned about how a, a vending program would actually be enforced given the lack of city resources and how the bids would be impacted in terms of having to clean up after the vendors. Um, one more thing, we just ask that special consideration be given to downtown given the density and entertainment and unique issues that we face and before any citywide program is launched that the city have a realistic plan and identified funding for enforcement and implementation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Blair Beston, Director of the Historic Core Business Improvement District. I don't want to repeat necessarily what um, the other folks have said, but I, I represent 50 blocks, uh, thousands of small businesses, over 1,100 property owners. Uh, we had 28 small businesses open in the Historic Core last year alone. Um, we do have a letter outlining the many concerns that we have with the prospect of a blanket uh, citywide policy change on this issue. Um, but in light of the fact that the the report came out today. We just ask that no further action be taken until the source and the amount of funding is designated for the enforcement and the implement implementation. We would appreciate special consideration for the downtown area, um, perhaps a pilot program outside of dense commercial zones, or if citywide, then in areas where there's a dearth of food and retail for obvious reasons. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Karen, uh, Rishi? Elizabeth Peterson? No? Okay, and we've got uh, several who uh, just have some general comments. We'll take those at this time as well. Erwin Glenn? Greg Kettles? Kent Smith? Francesca De La Rosa? Anthony Manzano. Good afternoon. My name is Francesca Della Rosa with Works. We are a nonprofit affordable housing developer fighting for an equitable food system for all. This is why Works is in strong support for a citywide program that would legalize and regulate food and non food street vending. Hunger and limited food options is a real issue facing our resident population, especially at the end of the month when one's monthly food allowance has already been spent. Street vendors provide a vital and affordable food resource for our community members. Were it not for the street vendors near our senior housing in Highland Park, many of our residents who are homebound due to illness or lack of transportation would not have a way to purchase a hot meal or some produce to get them by. Let me be clear, without the street vendors, our seniors would go hungry. These vendors are their neighbors and friends, and they help fill the gap for those in need. When any member of our community is targeted for simply trying to support themselves, it affects everyone in every neighborhood. A responsible, humane, and fair citywide program will be a win for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Erin Glenn. Uh, I'm part of ELAC's uh, steering committee on street food vending, and I've also in the past worked uh, with the uh, for the Asociación de Loncheros, the Latino catering food um, truck operators, owners and operators. And I, um, you know, listening to some of the folks that are in opposition, I would say that you know their concerns. Um, I'm sure some of them, many of them, are valid. Um, when we worked with, when I was part of the um, Lonchero, the or Association, we worked extensively with the city, and there were issues that we had to address as well. But I know that, um, independent of those concerns, street vending is a valid form 
of entrepreneurship and should be recognized as such. Um, Councilman Huizad el eloquently said that Los Angeles has a world-class street vending um, scene, but it's operating in the shadows. I know for the loncheros, um, once they were recognized by the city of Los Angeles as stakeholders, many of those issues and concerns began to be ameliorated because they were able to come to the table and work with the city to fix some of these issues. Um, if you see, you see our vendors here, they already are stakeholders, but they need the city to recognize them as such. Once they become, they are asked and invited to the table, I can guarantee you that some of the concerns will be addressed and the problems will be changed. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Greg Kettles. I'm an attorney, an occasional writer on street vending and street commerce and former deputy council to Mayor B. Ragosa. Uh, I come to respond to the CLA report. I'm concerned that streamlining the current ordinance is going to result in another failed attempt by this city to address street vending. I studied the MacArthur Park vending district while it was operational. I interviewed the legal vendors. I interviewed the illegal vendors across the street, law enforcement, and the people of Mansion District. This is what I found. The district is flawed in part because it requires vendors to go through too many hoops to get a legal vending district set up. This empowered special interest groups to limit the amount of product and the kinds of products that vendors could sell, essentially handcuffing them so that they could not become successful in vending legally. The second major defect with the current ordinance is that by setting up districts, it creates a magnet for illegal vending. The MacArthur Park Vending District had about 30 legal carts, but it attracted hundreds of illegal vendors from all over the city. It gave vending a black eye. The only feasible solution is to essentially legalize vending on a citywide basis. That way, no one has to, to play the fall neighborhood to sell the vendors come here. It should be citywide. Everyone should share the burden. Thank you for your attention to this. Thank you. Yes. How does that... Um, <clears throat> How does that change behavior? This, uh, what you were suggesting. How does this change behavior? Yeah, how does that change behavior? I'm interested in how you're suggesting that if we go citywide, that then there's going to be full compliance. There's going to be better compliance because people are, the, the merchants in MacArthur Park said, look what happened here. We legalized vending here and now we're inundated with all these illegal vendors. If vending is legalized citywide, there's no one neighbor that's bearing the burden with everyone in the city going to one street, Alvarado instead. It happens kind of everywhere. So you don't have the serious problems of congestion that you do if you just have a district. Why would there not be compliance? I'm still not clear why there's not compliance. Who comp I'm not clear why some comply and some don't. Some complied with the legal vending. There were plenty of people who wanted to go legal. There was a limitation on the number of carts. There are only about 33 legal uh, fancy yeah. carts are available. More people wanted to participate. The permit it's the fees restriction then on the carts that's the factor. Right? Restrictions on the carts, uh, restrictions on what okay. they could sell, permit prices, and so on. Thank you. The, the, the articles I wrote, Council Member, if I may, the, the articles I wrote are available online. I'd be happy to email them to you if you'd like to read them. Or a cup of coffee. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. My name is Kent Smith. I represent the LA Fashion District bid in downtown. We have over 3,000 businesses creating thousands of jobs for Angelinos. We've sent you a letter outlining our concerns about legalizing vending in the fashion district and in downtown. The CLA's report, uh, as Councilmember Martinez indicated, was just released this morning. We've not had the opportunity to read it, let alone fully understand its recommendations. Uh, our board of directors has not even seen the report. Um, we just like you to give us and all the stakeholders the time required to digest the report and provide you with feedback before you move forward with the recommendations that are in the report. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, Lynn Myers, Anthony Manzano, Robert Baird, Nelson Castillo, Adina Tesler, Missy Iwatatsu. And 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Adina Tesler, and I am here representing the California Restaurant Association. Um, many of the same concerns that were mentioned recently um, by the different business organizations uh, we share. Uh, particularly, we've worked with uh, San Diego and San Francisco just recently on their citywide permitting um, ordinance, and we recognize that a process is needed. Um, and we hope that you will allow us to be a part of the process and to keep in mind how particularly food, food vending affects the brick and mortar restaurants. In some of the other cities, we've uh, created a permitting process that allows notification to restaurants within a certain area where a street vendor plans to set up. Um, so there's zoning issues, there's permitting notification. In addition, it was mentioned by another speaker that restaurants have to pay all sorts of permitting process and comply with all sorts of health regulations and required to have restrooms in somewhere someone can wash their hands. And we think that all of this is very important when looking at uh, food vending on the street as well. So we hope that you'll allow us to be a part of this conversation and that you'll move cautiously in whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me just assure everyone that uh, this is an open process. Uh, all stakeholders are going to be invited to uh, be at the table as we uh, continue this discussion as we move it forward. Yes. Hi, I'm Misty Watsu, and I represent the Lincoln Heights Business Improvement District and the Highland Park Business Improvement District. Um, I'm playing catch up because, as you all know, the report just came out a few hours ago, and I have not had time to digest it. But I would like to ask um, how much enforcement is going to be needed? How much will it cost the city of LA? And how will the city of LA recover those costs? Also, the city of LA is currently considering making property owners responsible for sidewalk repair and replacement. So will the city be taking back that liability so that trip and falls or ADA compliances um, with street vending are um, in compliance? I just want to thank you all for hearing me today. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for those questions, questions we all want answers to. <laughs> Good day, council members. My name is Anthony Manzano. I'm not representing anybody here today. I'm just here as a stakeholder. I have served on the neighborhood council and participated in that level for 10 years now, so I understand what it's like to listen to the stakeholders and make a sound decision. When you do make a decision, you have to both make it logically and practically. And tonight, uh, today we've heard uh, most of logical. Practical is though, who's going to be in charge? Who's going to regulate? Who's going to be liable? Who's going to pick up the trash? Who's going to make sure there's quality control? Who's going to make sure they're washing their hands? How can you stop the dirt and the dust coming by from debris and vehicles passing by to get on the food? So what I would first suggest is probably refrain from making a decision relating specifically to outside food sales. If it has to do with an open flame, regulate it, get the county in Involved. If it's other merchandise, fine, because it's sealed, it's uh, non-contaminable. But if you're going to have people out there who have, maybe have illnesses, who could pass hepatitis, who are not washing their hands, and you have all these other safety concerns at the, at the county level that are not being addressed here today because I haven't had, uh, heard any county representatives on the health department speak on this issue, then I'll probably refrain from making a sound decision today, wait 30 days, which is a very simple request, push this to the neighborhood councils, and let them provide a community impact statement and then return with a decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Nelson Castillo. I am here in my individual capacity. However, I am the president of the Westlake South Neighborhood Council. I would like to express a lot of the sentiments that have been made today about you need to be very cautious and you need to be very deliberate with the process of examining this very, very complex issue. Um, the Neighborhood Councils, as has been said before, we have not been a full participant in this process. We would like to be full participants in this process. We are at the epicenter of, um, of street vending. We are our boundaries and, com and compass uh, Alvarado and 6th Street, and we want to be full participants. This report raises more questions than answers questions. It's very summary-like. I happen to be an attorney at law, and I would expect from the city of Los Angeles to, if you are thinking of doing this in, in a very citywide position, that it will be a bigger report, which much more in depth, not only from the CLA, but also from the police department, from all these departments that you have asked that they report back to you. 
this report raises a lot of questions. And if you read the report, it even tells you that a lot of the pitfalls that other cities are already experiencing, how there's even a black market of all these permits that are being made. How many are you going to make available? There's a lot of questions. I urge the, the, the honorable council people to be very deliberate and objective in this very, and to allow the neighborhood councils to please have a voice. And again, this is my individual comments. I am not speaking today on behalf of the West Lake South Neighborhood Council because we have not had an opportunity to debate it. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes. If I need to excuse myself. I need to chair the Planning, Land Use, and Management Committee, which usually starts at 2.30. So I, need, I would get, like to excuse myself, but I wanted to thank you for scheduling this item. And uh, we look forward to further analysis and research. Uh, this is, I think, a preliminary step on a lot more work we need to do. It's not going to be easy. Uh, but at the end of the day, I do think, as we've heard from everyone on both sides, the system that we have now is broken, and we do, do have to do something. It's going to take a lot, of, a, a lot of work looking at other models, looking at the numbers, et cetera. But um, I want to thank you for agendizing this, and I look forward to our next report as soon as we may. I think our chair is going to give some direction as to when we can be back here on this item. So I, but I need to excuse myself right now. And okay. Ms. Before, you, before you leave, uh, let, me, let me just uh, say we are going to continue this item for 90 days uh, without objection. I, I want to comment. Yes, uh, we'll leave you a chance to comment. Uh, we want to make sure that it is a process that everyone has a chance to have some input in. Uh, so we are going to be uh, continuing it uh, and, and asking for the appropriate uh, departments to do some follow-up. Okay. Uh, but we appreciate okay. your input Great. and Thank you. you must leave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right, let's uh, try to get the... Uh, I got to go to you. want to... I'm in that same commission. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. I'm the quorum. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't you make a comment before we go ahead? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I apologize, but uh, uh, I have to follow the chairman of the committee out because I represent the quorum. And so if I don't go, there'll be no, uh, no quorum. Let me, say, uh, let me say a few things. First of all, quiero decir gracias a todos que están aquí. Tengo mucho orgullo de su presencia. Sus presentaciones son bien claro, su posición acepto. Y bueno, quiero, tengo mucho orgullo de sus presentaciones. Son bien claro, muy fuerte, con dignidad y con respeto. Todos saben mi posición, soy 100% en acuerdo para dar licencias a todos por cualquier cosa, ¿no? A manejar y todas las otras cosas. No es difícil. Pero este, en este punto hay, hay, buscan un balance, ¿no? Y yo creo que todos quieren lo mismo. Primero que, queremos justicia. Nadie, yo, es horrible que deportaciones vienen de esta actividad. Es, no es aceptable. Este, también uh, buscan uh, igualdad, buscan uh, una resolución que sirve a todos. Let me say for the, um, those who are challenged by what I just said, that uh, I have an incredible pride for those who came today to represent themselves and speak for themselves. They were articulate, they were clear, they were disciplined, they were dignified, and I applaud them with tremendous, tremendous pride. Let me say that our results, uh, Chairman, and I think you agree, and um, my colleague, Nuri, uh, Ms. Martinez, I'm sorry for being impersonal, or personal. <laughs> no one should be deported. In this administration that's deported two million uh, people and divided families, no one should be deported for selling food to survive. So let's be very clear that that is a bottom line. We are seeking justice for everyone. We are seeking equity for everyone. And we're seeking fairness for everyone that's involved. And so I applaud your, your perspective, Mr. Chair, because there, I think there is a, a solution here. We have to recognize that we heard from entrepreneurs today. And I want to particularly note uh, Phyllis McInnes. I don't know if she's still here. And Rosa Calderon. Very impressive because these are individual economic strategies to combat homelessness, to create economic empowerment, and, to, and, and people have made a choice. Uh, I don't want to be critical of others, but they've made a choice to use their resources, nonetheless, 
under difficult economic circumstances to become entrepreneurs. Now, if it was Amazon, we would be happy to give Amazon all the tax breaks that we could think of, right? If it was Uber or Lyft or someone else and they used a computer, we would think this is great and we would not give them any regulations and we would applaud their efforts and say this is the future. This is the most basic general type of economic activity since the beginning of economic activity. And so we have to recognize that. But the challenge for us is to figure out how to do that responsibly and with a balance. I know that you're searching to do that. There are real challenges that get presented because of the magnitude now of this. And so in this report, the report is modest, I'll say. But I want to see comparatives how San Francisco and San Diego do this successfully, how New York does this, how other great urban areas do this, so that we can make this from a challenge into something that is very constructive and very positive. There are some fundamental disadvantages when you invest in brick and mortar and create an audience and create a community. And then obviously it's that community and that audience that then opens and lends itself to, to street vending. And I think we can reconcile that. And that's what the challenge is for us. 90 days hopefully is enough time. It may take more. Uh, everyone needs to be at the table. Uh, everyone should be at the table. They deserve to. But I think we are really on the cusp of a real uh, opportunity here if everyone continues in the manner that they have with this incredible commitment uh, to, to present their perspective, to present their position, uh, and to do so with the openness that people have come here today uh, to be part of the solution and not a problem. So uh, thank you. I apologize. I have to excuse myself, as you know, to go to the next committee. But I applaud uh, everyone who is here because I know that we will get the solution that is both just and fair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. We're going to... <clears throat> We just have a few more cards, and we again appreciate everyone's patience uh, and uh, your willingness to participate in this uh, the hearing today. Uh, uh, I'm Rob Baird. I'm with Community Health Councils. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Robert. Just, just uh, after you get started here, we've also got uh, Judy, is it Lynn, uh, Kieran uh, Rishi, Elizabeth Peterson, and uh, Sylvia Molina on deck. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Rob Baird. I'm with Community Health Councils. Um, and an aspect of this issue that we've been interested in is the relationship between street vendors and school nutrition, um, which doesn't get mentioned in the CLA report, but um, we would assert is a pretty important issue. And we've provided a letter with um, preliminary findings uh, from an ongoing health impact assessment um, on this issue um, that we are collecting data on and hoping to complete soon. Um, the preliminary data indicates that um, the legalization of street vending um, won't necessarily create more vendors near schools. Um, and that suggests that um, the, the impetus to legalize um, street vending and create economic opportunity can be balanced with student nutrition and the need to preserve healthy school environments um, for nutrition. Um, so we encourage the council to consider student nutrition um, when crafting these new regulations. Um, and also to consider earnestly how to empower healthy food vendors near schools um, because there is a lot of demand um, for unhealthy food, but that demand can shift to a lot of outlets. So if we can, um, street vendors do represent an um, opportunity, a solution to the issue of, of uh, poor nutrition environments. So that's what, that's what we would Thank say. You. Thank you. Sylvia Molina. Esmeralda. Carrillo, Ronald Collins, Rosa Miranda, Adriana Aguilar, Ivan Liu, Abelino Pablo. If your name has been called, please come forward. Good afternoon, and I prefer to do this in Spanish. Buenas tardes a todos. 
Mi nombre es Abelino Pablo Carrillo. Represento a los vendedores de la calle 6. Soy el presidente de los vendedores de la calle 6, Westlake Area. Abelino Pablo. Good afternoon. My name is Abelino Pablo. I represent the street vendors on 6th Street. Señores, gracias eh, le doy a Dios porque ustedes en su agenda ponen de manifiesto este tópico, este I, problema. I God because you're including this subject in your, as an item in your agenda. Solo quiero pedirles un favor. I want to ask you a favor. ¿Ustedes quieren más homeless en, la, en las calles? Do you want more homeless on the streets? ¿Ustedes saben el colapso del dólar? Do you know how the dollar has collapsed? Hemos escuchado al señor Mike Maloney. We've heard Mr. Mike Maloney. Robert Kiyosaki. Mr. Robert y muchos Kiyosaki más. And many others. Esto que estamos apoyando y pidiendo. What we're asking for and what we're supporting. Hola. Eh, Maya Spirit Foundation. Hola, Maya Spirit Foundation. El Frente de Unidad Maya. The Mayan Unity, the Front of Mayan Unity. Lo hemos requerido de muchos años, lastimosamente. We've uh, united all these organizations through many years, and unfortunately and sadly. Hubieron tropiezos. There were obstacles. Para la causa que estábamos pidiendo se nos legalizara las ventas, no en la calle. For the cause that we are asking for vending to be legalized, not necessarily street vending. Si no, ustedes tienen el mecanismo para poder legalizar a esta gente que tiene necesidad. But you have the mechanism to legalize these people who have great needs. Como presidente de la asociación tengo experiencia de cómo han sido tratados los vendedores por President, la policía. President Association, I've experienced and I've noticed how uh, the vendors have been treated by police officers. Okay, please, yo creo, please summarize, sir. Y yo creo que es eh, justo o no es justo que nos pongan en polémica and I think it's fair or not fair to be pueblo y autoridades. Pónganse en nuestros zapatos. As authorities and, and as Please put yourself in our shoes. Gente llorando porque han sido deportados. People are crying because they've been deported. Yet they didn't get their money. Y uh, por favor, hagan una resolución inteligente. Please. Porque los intelligent ordinance. Thank los you. vendedores también ayudan a las uh, al comercio ya establecido. Those vendors also help establish right. businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Esmeralda. Good afternoon. Soy, my name is Esmeralda. Soy vendedora ambulante. I'm a street vendor. Soy hija y nieta de vendedores ambulantes. I'm a daughter and I'm also a granddaughter of street vendors. Pertenezco a la organización de ILAC. I belong to ILA organization. Y soy miembro de la Legalicemos a los vendedores ambulantes. And I'm also a member of the group Let's Legalize Street Vending. Tenemos cuatro años en la lucha. We've been in this battle for Somos the last four years. Personas que pusimos el tema. We're one of the first group who first brought this subject to light. Eh, desde los 15, fui madre soltera, como se ha hablado, de gente adulta, gente mayor. Soy una joven vendedora ambulante. I, like I said, I'm a street vendor and I'm a single mother. We've spoken about elderly people, we've spoken about people who cannot get jobs, but I am a young single mother who earns a living through street vending. Tal vez no tuve la oportunidad que tuvieron ustedes o otras personas. Perhaps they didn't have the opportunity that you have had or other people have had. Pero queremos que nos apoyen a legalizar por mi familia, por la familia de mis compañeros. But I'm asking you to please support and legalize the street vending ordinance so that it's, it's, it'll favor or benefit my family and other families as well. Por favor, comprometanse con nosotros hoy día. De verdad necesitamos mucho su ayuda. Please make a no? commitment today. We really, truly need your help. Nosotros somos personas trabajadoras. Because we are hardworking people. Okay, thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. I want to thank all, all of you for your, your testimony, pro and con, and, and those who, who weren't sure. This is a very uh, uh, important and, and complicated issue uh, involving food vending, uh, general merchandise, uh, full-time, part-time, uh, zoning, 
planning issues, and so we just appreciate uh, uh, the discussion that we have started. Uh, we know there's still a lot of work to do, um, but this is certainly uh, a beginning. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to continue this item for 90 days, and uh, if there's no objection, um, uh, Councilwoman, uh, we're going to instruct the CLA to form a working group with appropriate city departments to report back to this committee with recommendations to design, fund, and implement a streetwide vending program, including the necessary enforcement measures, operational budget, revenue projections, vendor fees, and options to uh, encourage healthy food vending. Um, we're also going to ask the city attorney to prepare an ordinance based on the uh, wording of the uh, group's recommendations. Uh, and then finally, we want to instruct the Economic and Workforce uh, Development Department to provide assistance through the business source centers uh, in conjunction with community stakeholders, including business organizations, business improvement districts, neighborhood councils, others, to develop an educational campaign to assist street vendors with becoming compliant with government code and applying for required permits, uh, and to recreate a microloan program for vendors to purchase necessary equipment. And so again, this is uh, um, the beginning of a process, an opportunity for input from all stakeholders on uh, what the rules, what the regulations, uh, what the parameters of street vending should be in our city. Uh, and I'm hopeful that, uh, uh, that we can come together, uh, reach, a kind of, reach a consensus that will permit us to move forward and to bring Los Angeles uh, into the uh, uh, 20th century and, and, and to the ranks of those cities that have effective, sensitive, uh, and uh, responsive street vending programs. Uh, without uh, objection, uh, Councilwoman, if uh, you'd like to any other comments. Um, sorry, oh, sure, thank you. Um, so did you move that? I'll move that. Uh, I, I will second that. With your second. Um, well, thank you very much. I think it was a very good discussion. Uh, I did, did express my frustration about receiving the report uh, late, but I think we're going to fix that in the future. Uh, I was disappointed that I didn't see anybody from the Valley here today. Um, the Valley is almost 2 million people, and we can't continue to ignore that. So I'm going to, I'm happy to, um, you know, listen to all perspectives from across the city, but I have an obligation to listen to my district, particularly the Valley, because that's where I'm from. So I just wanted to make sure that I said that on the record because I didn't hear anybody here from the Valley. And it is a very important. Oh, you didn't say that when you were here. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I didn't hear anybody say that when they were speaking. I mostly I heard other parts of the city. That's right. great. Um, well, still, this is a citywide issue. We definitely need input from all parts of the city. And, uh, but as a Valley representative, I have to reiterate that we are a lot of people there, almost 2 million people, and we have to hear all perspectives from across the city, including the Valley. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's uh, no other business at this time, uh, this meeting is adjourned.